Okay. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> We're going to talk some watches here today. Uh, a little watch history for me, my history, and why I bought these two watches, what's wrong with one of them, and that whole thing. Look, man, I, I've been wearing a watch since I was a little kid. My dad used to give me his watches. I started off on mechanical winding watches, so I had to learn how to do that without breaking a watch and all that. <clears throat> and then quartzes came along, right? So as a kid in the late 70s, I started wearing like a quartz watch. I don't remember all the watches I had. I had a Waltham. I had a Timex. And I bought a Pulsar in like junior high or something. Wore that in high school. Got the first G-Shock. Wore that through the core, all that. But I never thought too much about watches. To me, it has to do something. It has to just tell the time. And typically, what you see is you get a watch. Somebody wears that watch all the time. And now that I'm into this as a hobby... <clears throat> And I'm constantly looking at watches and researching things and learning. I change my watch all the time. I change it out. Uh, I'll wear it. I'll wear a watch. Like this is, happens to be my favorite watch here uh, for right now. I, I, I like the details on this particular watch. This is a Seiko 5. They call it 55 Fathoms. This watch here is based on the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, which was basically the first dive watch you can go out and buy. I'm fascinated by dive watches. I think that they're neat. I'm not a diver. Uh, I do love snorkeling and all that. That's another conversation. But I like them because they're shock-resistant, waterproof, tough watches. And they really come from the military, right? I think it was uh, uh, Panerai, right? Came up with, like, the first dive watch for the Italian frogmen uh, in the late 30s. And then, you know, Blanc Pond and then Rolex. And so they're they're... They've been around and they were for men doing man stuff, which brings me to these two watches. So I got these two watches because of a TV show. <clears throat> Big fan of Magnum PI. Watched it from the beginning when it was on originally in 1980. And even in high school, I had the Detroit Tigers uh, ball cap, which I lost on a canoe trip <laughs> with a girlfriend. <laughs> Probably like 1983. And uh, one of the things I find fascinating about myself now is that I would never paid attention to the watch he wore in that show. He wore two watches in that show. I also never really paid attention to the watches that anybody wore in movies. Didn't really care. James Bond films were interesting because you, you can't help but notice that a watch is featured all the time. <clears throat> but I could have never have told you what the watch was. Never cared. World War II films. Quick shot of the wrist, you know, and I'm now I'm in the habit of taking wrist watch shots of the TV screen when I watch an old World War II movie. I, I watched the Guns of Navarone the other day, and Gregory Peck's character is wearing a Gruen, and I took a picture of that just because I think it's neat. But I digress, as per usual. So Magnum P.I. in the first three seasons wore a Quartz, uh, Chrono Sports, uh... Chrono Sports Sea Quartz 30. So it's a 300 meter water resistant dive watch, quartz, stainless steel case, you know, rotating bezel, typical dive watch. It was the case, I believe, is like a, is something that the British came up with because their watches, the CWCs and all that for their military, have that sort of case. Magnum's characters, you guys remember, I don't know if they're ever really super clear on that. I think it's Navy SEAL, and uh, that's the watch he was wearing. It made sense for his character. Season four, I'm in, I'm in the middle of season three right now. In season four, he switches to a Rolex uh, GMT. <clears throat> and it's interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I, I know that in the beginning of season four, he's a little kid. He's flashing back to his dad's funeral, I think it is. And he's got his dad's uh, Rolex on his wrist. Problem is that that Rolex didn't exist at the time that his dad would have died. Doesn't really matter. It's a TV show. Now, I'm just trying to jump real fast because I got to get to work here. The thing about watches is I'm, I've learned this, and I'm hanging out at a watch shop all the time. I was in there yesterday. I bought my first Swiss watch recently, too. So I'm going to go. I'm bringing that to him today, have him eyeball it, and I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. I'm very excited about it. But <clears throat> watches have to just tell you the time. And depending on what your job is, you may not need a tough watch. You might like a tough watch because it looks cool. Totally understand that. Uh, but these days, it's not what it used to be. It used to be if you wanted a decent, a good quality watch, you wanted a watch from a company that had their own in-house movements. 
Seiko comes to mind because they were, they're pretty affordable and they make these great movements. Today, we have these factories in China that are churning out well-spec quality watches that are not garbage. When I was a kid in the 70s and the early 80s, you would buy a watch a lot, half the time it's a cheap watch, you know. <clears throat> Today it's different. You can get a watch out of a Chinese factory that is better spec than a new Seiko. Mainly because the alignment is oftentimes better, but also it'll come with a sapphire crystal. Most Seikos are coming with hard legs, especially if you're looking at the Prospex models, the divers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and the Chinese models are coming with Seiko NH movements in them. The NH34 for a GMT, NH35 for a date feature, NH36 for a day date feature, NH38s if there's no date. You know, it's pretty amazing. And these watches can come in at under $100. Stainless steel cases, uh, water resistant, two, two, three hundred meters, uh, sapphire crystals, again, Miota movements, name brand movements. So to, in my mind, I don't see the reason to be buying watches that are going to be three, four, five, six hundred dollars when I could buy a watch that gives me the look I want inexpensively. <laughs> but still functions. It does what it needs to do. And you have to worry about it. There's a whole, there's a mindset there that I enjoy. So to watch that Magnum wore in the first three seasons, the Chrono Sports uh, Seacourts 30, to find one of those, they're very expensive. However, there's two companies right now making kind of like a reissue of it. One is called a Chrono Ports. And this guy apparently is an enthusiast. He made this watch. The only difference on it is the bezel on it is black. The hands are correct and everything else looks pretty correct on it, but there's been some reviews and there's some problems with this watch. Namely, they might have been corrected by now, but namely that the holes in the case that hold the pins for your strap are too uh, shallow and the watches are popping off the bracelets. That's a problem for me. You can find that watch for the two to $250 range in there before shipping on eBay. <clears throat> The other watch is Momentum. Now, the guy who originally had the uh, made the Chrono Sports is now he owns Momentum, or he's partners with people that own the Momentum Watch Company. This is a Canadian company, and they're making a new watch. It's the uh, it's the Momentum Seacourts 30, and it looks a lot like the original, but the hands aren't exactly the same. Same thing on that one. Both of those watches, you're basically going to pay in the $300 price range with shipping. Unless you find one used at a deal, that sort of thing. So I was looking around and I discovered AliExpress, which is a great place if you want to go there. Just be advised if you like having multiple watches and cool styles, you're going to, they're cheap as far as the cost. I think most of them are pretty well made. I haven't gotten burned yet until now. I'm about to show you. <laughs> I'm not happy about it. <laughs> And you know, usually I would say you get what you pay for, but as I'm saying, you can get a well-spec watch for under $100, so it's pretty crazy. But <clears throat> when it comes to the watch thing, and again, as I said earlier, not paying attention to what people were wearing in TV shows or film, now I do. And so there are some watches I want because it reminds me of that stuff. And that's what I did here. I bought two inexpensive versions of the watches that Magnum wore on the show. The first one is this, uh, I, forget, it's a, I can't pronounce it. It starts with a Q, this company. And it's on AliExpress. I'll try to remember to put the links to these watches below. I like this case that it comes in, this nice little zipper case. Pretty cool. Uh, but there's an obvious issue with this watch. <laughs> Dust everywhere in this place. It's crazy. It is working. But, and I'll show you guys close-ups, the, uh, the second hand <laughs> is not connected in the watch. It's floating under the crystal, and that's a bummer. Other than that, if you look at this watch, it's a nice watch. It's a stainless steel watch. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, water-resistant. It's got a sapphire, uh, I believe it's a sapphire crystal. I'm not sure on this watch. Looks a lot like what Magnum wore. It's an $80 watch. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to send this back or they'll just send me another one, which I hope they will do. Uh, I'm going to send them the link to this video that I do. That's a huge disappointment. 
The other watch is this Tandorio. I've been avoiding Tandorio. Just, I don't know. I don't like the logo. They do sell them with a sterile dial. That's what this is. And right now, recently, in the last couple of years, Seiko came up with a NH34, like a true GMT movement. And they made it available for everybody else. So companies are taking that movement and they're building watches around it. So what Tandorio did, I'm just showing you the packaging, how it comes, is they came up with a copy, right, basically, of that Rolex GMT. I just wanted to sh keep these in the boxes so you can see how they came to me. Both of them were in uh, wrapped up in bubble wrap and in envelopes. Now this watch, it looks great. And I played with these. I set the time and the date on these things. Uh, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, and I just think it's fun. 120 click uh, bezel. That I think lines up pretty well. I'll put it on the wrist for you. This is my Aragon Dive Master. It's a 50 millimeter. You guys know I make these uh, cuffs. And my point of this video is just, you know, you can get the look of what you're looking for. I put this bracelet back on backwards. <laughs> Got to fix that. I didn't bring my calipers with me, but you guys can look these up. I'll put the links in. So if I wanted to watch the show and feel like I'm Magnum, I can go ahead and wear this GMT now, you know. But the C-Quartz, I bought this as a goof. Both of these watches were only around $80 shipped. And this thing here, it's, 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 it's all stainless steel. It's well-made, sapphire crystal, the Cyclops on there, the winding works. It hacks, it winds. I'm pretty blown away by it. But I'm just really disappointed by this one because this is the one that I was excited to put on. I thought this would be a great beater. And I'm not a quartz guy, by the way. I'm a, I'm, I prefer automatic movements. I just prefer automatic movements. And I thought, well, I'll get a quartz. We'll see how it goes. I mean, they obviously keep more accurate time. You don't have to mess around with them until the battery goes. And these days, that's the other thing about quartz is back in the day, the batteries just didn't last that long. Uh, it didn't seem like the battery technology wasn't as good. So the battery would go out and then you had to find a place to go to get the battery and bring it to a guy and pay him to swap out the battery and all that. And trying to find that kind of time when you're busy, oftentimes it was just easier to go to the store and buy another watch. That's why there's all these old watches out there you could buy that it says new battery installed or needs a battery. <laughs> which brings me to another point, which I, I should have brought it with me. I did pick up a vintage Seiko Diver. And the guy said it needs a battery, but there could be something else wrong with it. And I brought it to my watch guy yesterday, and it turns out that the uh, coil was damaged by somebody, likely trying to replace the battery. So i got to find another movement for that watch if I want to do anything with it. It's a ladies' diver. But um, just my disappointment about this. Let me show you the close-ups of these real quick. I'm going to keep the uh, Seiko 5 out here. Keeping in mind, now, this the interesting thing about the Seiko 5 is... Is 55 fathoms uh, it is a pull push crown it's not a locking screw down crown okay that's the only thing I don't like about it I wish it was a little bit more heavy duty these two have locking screw down crowns this isn't like a full-on review I'm not really giving you the specs on the size they're both I think they're around a 40 millimeter case uh, they're like 12 to 13 millimeters thick. Uh, lug width, I think on this one is 20, looks like 22 possibly. This one's probably a 20. I know this is a 22 on here on the Seiko 5. The band on this is okay. I'll go ahead and put this on. But again, I just want, look, it's just so ridiculous. that that seconds hand is just floating around under the dial. That would be, that would really piss a lot of people off. I'm not happy about it. I'm not going to sit here and uh, like really scream and like curse the company. It's, it came out of China. I can't, you know, it's luck of the draw on that sort of thing. So, um, 
Cumi, I think, is the name of it. Uh, it's like a Q U I M E, I think, is the company. I wanted to do this at home, but I had to get to work today. I, you know, maybe I'll stop this video right here. It's at 15 minutes, and I'll add a little bit more to it and show you the link so you guys can uh, see what they write about their watch there because they really they tied into Vietnam and which is a little odd. I'm not sure that that watch was available that early. I think I'm reading that right or remembering that correct. I look at a lot of watches that were made for, uh, I guess, those guys in mind. And uh, so they give you all this history to make you want to buy the thing, and then they send you something that's broken. I, you know, it's just ridiculous. What do you guys think? You think they'll, you think they'll uh, correct this for me? We'll see when they see this. <laughs> I'd love to be able to come on and say, this is a great company. They uh, sent me a replacement watch and they didn't get, because I don't want to go through the trouble of sending this thing back, to be honest with you. It's not worth the time I have to take out of my day to package this thing back up and take it to the post office and everything else. Like the post office in LA is a friggin' nightmare. It's going to lose a, probably between putting it all back together, getting there, standing in line and everything else. It's going to be a couple hours out of my day and it's going to cost me money to send it to them. So for an $80 watch, you know, I mean, I'm not happy about pissing away that money, but hopefully it won't be pissed away. Hopefully they'll make this right. Mainly, I just wanted to point out that if you like the show, if you're a Magnum PI fan and you wanted to wear a watch that looks a lot like what he was wearing, you can get this. And you're all going, wait a second, you're telling me it doesn't work. It's the luck of the draw, man. Here's an $80 watch with absolutely nothing wrong with it. A GMT. NH34 movement for $80. That's crazy. That's amazing. So I will wear these. Hopefully I'll get the replacement on this and we'll see how they hold up. And I'll eventually do like a real review after having worn them for a while. I mean, this thing works great. It's flawless. My dive master here is awesome. You can see the difference in size. And that's it for now. Maybe there'll be a little bit more on the back end of this video. I'll probably add a frame there. And if so, you'll see that next. And if not, <clears throat> I'll do a little tag on the end here. So stick around. Okay, so here is the... That's Queeme, however heck you pronounce that. This is their page on AliExpress for this watch. It says factory original 42 millimeter Cooper Submaster SAS SBS military 300 meter diver men's watch with super luminous and or super luminous NATO strap 8016R new arrived. Okay, so let's get to the specs. First of all, there's these, this paragraph here. It says the kind of watch worn by hairy chested secret agents from SBS types with easy smiles and big, well, we won't go any further. Okay, it's, they get a little crazy here with this. <clears throat> That's not why I bought this watch. <laughs> it's funny, though. It does sound like they're talking about Magnum. Needless to say, the Cooper Submaster exudes the style of the indestructible diver's watches worn by the British Special Forces in the 1970s and 80s, a functional form that doesn't date uh, and always has a classic style for diver's watch aficionados. The Submaster is a British design court state military diver's watch, traditional stainless steel finish, complete with high quality 20 millimeter NATO strap. Uh, the black dial is enhanced with Submaster in white and retro military gladiator hands. Uh, fully waterproof to 300 meters or 1,000 feet, pressure tested. The matte finish on the case gives the watch an anti reflective qualities uh, when on daylight missions. The Special Gladiator hands are designed for much better visibility under low light conditions, either underwater or on night operations. The bezel insert is equipped with full 60 individual minute markers. This was originally designed so that military frogmen could be able to synchronize perfectly on dangerous mi co covert missions. Cases 42, excluding the crown, that's millimeters, uh, and 45 millimeters, including the crown. Uh, crystal diameter is 30 millimeters. Lug to lug is 47 millimeters. Case thickness is 12 meter millimeters. Case material, 316L stainless steel. Case back, 316L stainless steel. Crown, 316L stainless steel. Water resistant, 30 ATM. 
or 300 meters. Glass hardened mineral crystal. It's got a Miota 2115 quartz movement. Okay, so that's this watch. It sounds great, and for the price, it's friggin' amazing. And then these are the pictures. Now you have a few options on this uh, as far as the dials. I don't like this one. It's too much like a... The indices are a little bit too much like a Seiko for me. This is the one I went for. Okay? Again, there was, I had a discount. <clears throat> so with this shipped was $80. Now the other watch... I, it's a Tandor. I got this one off of eBay. But it's clear that this is a Chinese seller as well. And I did communicate with this guy. Uh, 40 millimeter NH34 movement automatic sapphire glass men's watch for men. Okay, GMT function 200 meters. So <clears throat> you guys can screenshot this if you want to read this. Uh, but all the specs are here 12 hour dial date indicator, easy to read, large numerals, luminous dial, luminous hands, luminous indexes. Uh, there's no loom on the bezel. I can tell you that. I checked it out last night. Power reserve indicator. That's not on there. Okay, so I guess you can't believe everything they're telling you. Uh, it says it's an NH35. I did adjust the uh, GMT. Seems to be working. You could do a custom logo, which is interesting. So if you own a business, you can contact these people. You can put your own business logo on there. And if you buy in bulk, you're going to get a better deal. So movement NH34, black dial, 40 millimeter without the crown on the width. 13.5 millimeter thickness, uh, 316L stainless steel, 200 meter water resistance, 20 millimeter strap, sapphire glass, folding clasp. So that's it. Uh, this guy, like I said, I texted with him and I said, hey, send me a good one. And he did. That's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great day.